Okay, I think I'm back. I think I'm back, guys. Can you see and hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Can you see or hear me? I think I'm back, but I'm not 100% sure, and I won't know until you guys let me know if you see and hear me. You're back. Yep. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. I don't know what happened then. It seemed like my OBS software got hung up somehow. Uh, I don't know if that was uh, YouTube having that problem or my OBS software disengaged from YouTube for some reason. That was weird. That was weird. But we're back now. So, okay. Got you. Okay. All right, so let's see. Where were we at? Um, not sure how you're going to do the lock solo. You need someone on the bow to hold lines and someone on the stern lines. I was thinking the same thing John Stratton says. It, it, ideally, that is the best scenario. However, it's not necessarily critical. What I can do, um, because I'm going to be going in stern to the current. Okay, the current's going to be behind me the whole way. So since the current's going to be behind me the whole way, what I can do is I can put some bumpers out on the center of the boat and out on the bow and simply hold a stern line and just keep the stern to the, to the sidewall of the, of the lock because the water is going to be coming from behind me forward and then raising me up. Now, it will tend to whirlpool sometimes because I've been through locks before. It will tend to whirlpool sometimes up towards the bow, which might pull the bow out a little bit. But for the most part, I'm going to be in the locks by myself uh, or maybe with another boat behind me. Uh, I will not be in a lock with someone alongside of me. So I, every time I go through the lock, I just simply throw my bumpers out and have them on both sides and just keep a hold of the stern rail where I can keep the stern you know, tied up against the wall and that should tend to keep the boat uh, tight of the wall, Wh whichever side of the wall I'm on. Um, I do know that I'm already looking at the cost of uh, long um, uh, dock lines for that purpose, you know, using the spring lines basically for that purpose for getting around the locks. The locks in the Erie Canal have basically a pipe that goes up and down, and you wrap your line around that pipe. And that way, as you go up and down, it goes up and down. It slides up and down the pipe with you. Um, it's not like you have the line. It's not, it's not like the Panama Canal where your line is to some handler who's like, you know, way up above you. Um, this case, there's this pipe that you tie to, and then it just goes up and down with you. So should be able to manage it by myself. It certainly would be more convenient having a second person. Um, I'm just not so sure right now that that boat's going to be, you know, sufficient that I would be willing to have somebody else subject themselves to living under those conditions for a while because it's not going to be pretty for a little bit. Um, anyhow, just my thinking. So, does the boat have reverse? Yes, the boat has a transmission and has forward and reverse. You need to have the seller pay the cost to put the boat back in the water. As much as I would like to do that, John, I've already made the deal on the boat. Um, the guy, guys, just so you know, full disclosure here, the guy was asking $2,800 for this Cal 229, and he's selling it to me for $2,000. It's going to cost like 150 bucks to throw the boat in the water. I'm not going to ask the guy to give, you know, go another 150 in the hole. Um, I think I'm getting a hell of a deal. I could sell the mast alone for that amount of money. I could sell the diesel motor alone for that kind of money if I wanted to part this boat out in pieces. Um, so I'm not going to try going back to the guy and beating him up for the cost of splashing the boat when the guy's already agreeing to sell me, you know, this, this boat that will float. It does have a working engine. That does have a, a mast that will stand. It does have a fleet. Uh, it's, it's got like six sails that comes with it. Um, I'm not going to try beating them up anymore. I'm, I'm happy with the boat the way it is. It's a great deal. It's a great price. 
and catch me out on a boat now. I'm not waiting. I'm not going to have to spend more months here in Ohio trying to get my real estate business in Florida going, worrying about trying to get back and forth. I'm not going to have to sell my truck and then try to buy some piece of crap truck to drive around in. I'm going to get on this boat and start making the kind of content that I have wanted to make for decades now. And I'm really excited about that opportunity. I'm really excited about the opportunity. And I'm really thrilled to have you guys coming along. My channel is building. You know, look at it this way, guys. I've been working. I've been fiddle farting around with my channel for two years. I have done everything possible to screw up my channel. Oh, I'm going to do homesteading. No, I'm going to do sailing. No, I'm going to do homesteading. No, I'm going to do sailing. I have confused my audience. And I have pissed off and angered a lot of people who simply probably will never come back. With all that said, I've been creating a sailing YouTube channel from a dry cabin up in Alaska and now a garage in Ohio without a boat. Think about that. I've had some of people that were subscribers tell me that my channel is going to blow up once I start making the right content. And I, I believe that to be the case. So now that I have a boat and, you know, this time next week, I hope to be on that boat. Um, and you're going to start seeing a lot of different content. And I think it'll work. I, I hope I'm I am betting my life on the fact that it's good. I'm laughing because that's true. I'm literally betting my life on the fact that that's going to work. Um, it's going to grow quickly. I'm going to pick up a lot of subscribers, a lot of Patreons. It's, it's going to work. Maybe I'm delusional thinking that, but it's going to work. So Frank Daniels says, hey, Grandpa, you're a good man for helping out your ex or husband after his fall. Not many people would do that after a divorce. Always knew you were a great guy. Can't wait to meet you one day. Well, Frank, I can't help to meet you. I, I, I hope to meet you one day, too. Um, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. I've always been a person of service. You know, I've always volunteered for whatever it was necessary of me. Over the years, I've been, you know, served on so many boards and organizations and 4-H leader for many, many years, uh, volunteer firefighter. Um, I so One of the most interesting things I did, I volunteered as a CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocate guardian at litem to youth in need. Now, this is when, you know, mom or dad got in trouble with the courts. The department is the, is thinking about taking the kids away from mom and dad and, and denying them their parental rights. The court system has these volunteers, these CASAs, which is what I was doing, uh, where we would represent the children going through this process. Um, it, was, uh, it was sort of an interesting position. We were... Um, uh, we were able to talk to the judge. We were ex parte. Uh, we were able to talk to the judge directly and privately. Uh, we were able to interview and talk to the children. Our job was to represent the children's best interest while their parents were dealing with their nightmares. And uh, it was very reward. It, it was without a doubt the most difficult, frustrating, angering, and yet most rewarding volunteer work I ever did. And I did that for a number of years in Montana. Uh, through the 6th Judicial Net, uh, District up there. So um, I've always been a man of service. So when people need help, I jump. It's just the way it is. Done deal. Don't jerk them around. Everyone is happy. Yep, I agree. You're talking about the guy selling the boat. I agree. Done deal. 2000 Oh, hell yeah. At that price, why not fix it up? Absolutely, Steve. And And she needs fixed up. She wants to be fixed up. She needs somebody who cares about her to clean her up and put her back on her legs. And that's exactly what I'd like to do. I want to clean this boat up and put her back on the legs. I want to clean up the interior and polish and spit and polish and some new upholstery and some new cushions and get a, a decent stove set up inside of it, get a decent head put in it properly and get it cleaned up so it could be a good liverboard or a good cruiser. And that way, when I go buy a bigger, better boat, I want to turn it over to somebody you know, with, with pride in my mind that I'm, I, I'm turning over to them a decent boat. And, you know, frankly, I bought this boat for 2000 I could put four, five, 6000 into this boat and probably sell it for 18, 19, maybe 20 once I get done with it. Maybe not that much, maybe 15, 16. But when I get it all cleaned up, spiffed up, 
prim and polished and and all the paint and and varnish and stuff where it needs to be you know I, i'm not going to lose any money on this boat not buying it this cheap unless the engine is just you know an anchor if the, if the engine shot and it's just an anchor then i screwed up um and i won't know that but at this point i've only got 300 bucks in the in the boat i've only given them a 300 dollars deposit we're going to put it in the water. That's going to cost me a little bit of money. And I'm going to have to buy a battery to put in it to start the motor. Once I do all those things, I'm going to have 600 bucks in the boat. If the motor doesn't start, then I've lost 600 bucks and I walk away. If the motor starts, hot damn, we're on to it. So, <clears throat> and we are still her for you, Carl. Well, thank you, Oxy. I appreciate that. Yeah, here, I got that. Hey, Trav, what's going on, man? Palm Limit, I think you're entertaining and amazing. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Doc Kozlowski. Kozlowski? Kozlowski. Holy stuff. Why does YouTube incessantly block us from a good man's content? I don't know, Doc. I almost be I'm beginning to wonder, you know, I I'm beginning to think that YouTube is its own worst enemy. Um, it seems like everything that's going positive in YouTube, it intentionally screws up. So I, I don't know, but I'm, you know, I'm an old, I'm an old grumpy old codger and I'm patient. So I'm just going to be patient and hope YouTube learns quickly. Steve Newby. Hey, Steve says, can't wait to see you walk your walkthrough video ever. That will be tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm going to give you guys a blood gore and guts tour of the boat the way it is right now. Um, if I can get the ladder. There's a possibility I may not be able to get the access ladder. If I can't get the access ladder, I'm going to do a half-assed tour of the outside. I won't be able to get inside because I won't be able to get up onto the boat because it's up in a cradle on the on the hard. Um, but I should be able to get the ladder tomorrow. If I can't get the ladder, I'm certainly going to fly my drone around it so you can see that. So, but let's be let's think positively, okay? Couldn't they show you that it runs before you committed? If it doesn't, then you're stuck again. Uh, RV camp life, it's in the, on the hard, and it, you don't start a diesel marine diesel engine uh, on the hard. It's got to be in the water because it uses water to cool itself. It sucks water from the ocean, it pumps it through the engine and back out an exhaust pipe, um, and so it needs that in order to be able to start it. So there's no way to start the diesel engine when it's on the hard. We have to put it in the water to do that. Um, what happened there? My screen just flashed and did nothing. Okay. Uh, back in my youth, we worked 24-7 installing legal sewage systems. There you go. Kim Bink says, looking forward to the pics and video of you and Miss Lily fixing the boat up. Well, I don't think Miss Lily is going to do very much, uh, but I certainly will. Frank Daniel says, hey, Carl, before they put the boat in the water and you spend all that money, why can't they start it on land using a garden hose? Not an outboard motor. It's a diesel engine. Um, <clears throat> I guess you could. I guess you could go up to the through hull and, and put a garden hose up into the through hull. Never seen anybody do that before, but I guess you could. But I think at this point, everyone's pretty confident. The guy selling the boat's 100% confident it won't be an issue. But, you know, he's selling a boat. So, and, and I'm fairly confident. I mean, you know, I turned the motor a little bit, and it seems like it's not locked up or anything. Um, at, at worst, I think, you know, I might have an injector problem or something like that, and that's certainly fixable because um, it's been sitting for so long, and that fuel is going to get in there and... and and varnish a little bit, but, um, I don't know. And it's, it's diesel. It's not gasoline. So, you know, gasoline tends to varnish more than diesel does. Um, Hey, we're going to find out this week. We'll know for sure. We'll know for sure. So I have a jet boat. You hook up two garden hoses. Okay. Bass finder 68. I will support you. Well, there you go. Bass finder. Awesome, man. Hey, if you're going to support, jump on my PayPal account and uh, and contribute or, uh, you know, join uh, join my Patreon. Uh, I'll put some links up here. There's the uh, there's the PayPal. If you want to just do a PayPal kind of thing. And if you're interested in uh, 
becoming more of a long-term player in what we're doing. I do have a, um, a Patreon account, and you can jump in. There's going to be some extra content on the Patreon account for those people that decide to go ahead and join Patreon. So Bashfinder68, check those out if you will. I'd certainly appreciate it. It won't overheat immediately. No, Palm Lemon, it would not. No, uh, it, it would not overheat. It would take a little while for it to heat up. Um, it's just good practice to make sure they have water flowing through them. So, <clears throat> Travis says, I paid $8,000 for an electric motor on my boat. The thing, I a gem. Every time we go out, the only thing we pay for is the food and the booze. How do you charge the electric motor? How do you charge the batteries that run the electric motor? And how much range does the electric motor have once that's charged? I mean, that still seems to be the problem. Down in the British Virgin Islands, I chartered a Lagoon 42 catamaran that was all uh, electric motors. And you know what? It still had to have a big generator to generate the electricity to charge the batteries to run the electric motors. Sure, I could run the electric motors without the generator for 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. And then after that, the generator had to kick on to power the whole thing. So it's just... Um, it's just adding another level. They just don't have electric motors on boats dialed in yet. There's still some issues they have to work out. It's getting there, and it's exciting watching what's happening with that. But it's got a ways to go yet. I'm still not an advocate yet of, of electric motors on a sailboat. Peaceful Don says, heard no lock fees 2018. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Yes, yes, isn't that awesome? It is the 100th anniversary of the Erie Canal they charge ungats, ungats. If you're from New York, that means ungats, nothing. They charge nothing, no fees, no expenses, no permits for 2018. I can go completely across the Erie Canal for free. Gotta love that. For free. So, Alexander O, I joined the other night. Yes, sir, and I saw that, Alexander. Thank you. Alexander O is one of my Patreons. He is an awesome dude, man, and I appreciate that, man. So thank you, Alexander. I appreciate it. Doc says, back in my day, bad engines were the common hidden problem. And what was that common hidden problem? You can't make a statement like that, Doc, without saying what it was. Uma was electric. Yes, Waukesha. Actually, Uma wasn't electric, but they made it electric, and now they're learning the error of their ways. If, you, if you're paying attention to their conversation right now, they are strongly talking about repowering UMA and going back to a diesel engine. Much like they said they didn't need an outboard motor for their dinghy, and now they have an outboard motor on the dinghy. Some people just need to, uh, you know, go through the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune and have life pound them in the head a few times before they understand that, you know, a hundred years of sailing history has led us to where we are today. You have universal diesel engines as a backup on a sailboat, and your dinghy has an outboard on the back because rowing sucks, especially when you're rowing in big waters against the wind, against the tide, against the current. Sometimes you need that little bit of gasoline to help push you along the way. Now, the outboard motor that I'm buying, a little 3.3 horsepower, isn't going to do much, but it'll move that boat and get me out where I need to be. It's just going to be me and the dog and a little dinghy. So it's not going to get up and plane by any means. I'm not expecting to go flying anywhere, but it will get me where I need to be. So Uma has a five-mile range, too. Yeah, five miles is nothing on a sailboat. Hey, if you get becalmed and you've got some serious crap coming your way, bad storm or something, you need to be able to get out of the way. Um, sometimes you just need to be able to power and get through stuff. And so, it, it, I mean, it's literally unsafe to be out there that way. Now, there are some people, Lynn and Larry Party, they've sailed around the world in, the, in Talisman, their boat, and it has no motor in it. They have to sail or they just sit out there and bob. Um these are highly experienced people with many, many, many years of sailing experience without a motor. Um, and even they know that, you know, the, at this point, they're so popular that they come to an anchorage. People come out and greet them and then tow them in for themselves. So, you know, even they recognize that sometimes you need that motor. They just rely on other people's generosity to pull them in.
and Lynn and Larry Party will admit that if you actually talk to them. They don't put that in their writing so much, but they'll admit that. Palm Limit says Rigging Doctor has electric motor too, but that's almost to hell not a sale. That's almost to hell not a sale channel. I'm not sure what all that means. Uh, and isn't Rigging Doctor the guy that just had to get his boat pulled off of the beach for like a eight thousand dollar tow bill from from uh, Towboat USA because he ran up on the beach with it? Correct me if I'm mistaken. So, hello, Mary. How are you? Palm Limit. How? How? Palm Limit. Are we Native American now? How? They are young. Solar power. I'm not sure what you're referring to with solar power or they are young or how. But. How, white man. Okay, one chill kick day. With the Montana, you pick up a little bit of, of the native language. What I just said is hello, white man in Lakota Sioux. Sounds like a country song, me and the dog and the little dinghy. <laughs> Invariably, the problem, gas or diesel was a cracked block. Oh, yes. Well, yes. That'll happen. If electric were the way to go, they would put it in all boats. Don't see it being put in any. Actually, Akula, you do see it being put in some, very, very few, certainly none of the commercial boats. Uh, but it will become more and more prevalent as that technology gets de developed better. The guy on UMA is pretty smart. Did you see all of his electrical computations when he was figuring out how to set up his motor? Yes, I did. And you are correct. That was, a, that was a fair bit of engineering and machine work that he did to convert over the electrical motor and to get that installed. Uh, kudos to him for having done that. However, he was thumbing his nose at 100 years of sailing history that he's now realized the, the fallacy with that thinking. And so, you know, he's going back to the idea, I, I kind of wish we had a diesel motor in there, so... Uh, I would not be at all surprised uh, now that they've painted up and cleaned up their boat. For a while there, I was beginning to wonder. But at this point, I think that since they've put all the time and effort into painting up and cleaning up their boat, I would not be surprised to have them repower their boat with a diesel engine now. Uh, before they cleaned it up, I thought they might just go ahead and get rid of that boat and get a better boat, find a better deal on something and move on uh, and, and, and slowly and quietly slip into a diesel engine. But now that they've taken the time to clean up and, and spiff up Uma, I would not be surprised to see them repower it to a uh, uh, to to a, uh, a diesel motor. Now, what they may do as an interim step, they might install a huge gen set in the on the boat, which is basically the same thing because then they're going to use the generator to charge the batteries and the batteries to power the motor. Either way, at some point, you're going to see them convert to a predominantly diesel-powered system. So, I think anyway. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. Uh, charges with the propeller as we sail probably takes one hour of sail for a full charge, and we can run the motor for a good 30 minutes. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's that's progress. Steve Newby says Uma is one bad battery connection, and they made it a big made a big deal of it. Well, I think there's and and you know Numa's defense, you know whatever they did what they did. I think there's a proclivity from a lot of these YouTube channels, including my own. I've caught myself at it sometimes, and I try to try to stop it. Is, is to over dramatize the situation. Um. Drama sells, sex sells, you know, that kind of stuff seems to attract people. Um, so people have a tendency to fall into that trap. I know I have in some small ways. I'm trying to avoid it. I will continue to try to avoid it in the future. So that's what I meant almost how not to sell. There you go. They did it for centuries with no motor at all. That's true, Steve. They did. Uh, but they had a lot of manpower available back then. So they would have a, a, a big ship would 
uh, sail into a harbor and then rowing crews would go out and tow it, it back into the docks with by manpower worth rowing. They don't do that anymore. Mary says, are you married, Carl? If so, will your wife go sailing with you? Mary, I am not married. I have just survived a very nasty divorce over the last two years. Uh, I am not planning on getting married anytime in the near future. Um, I'm a little <laughs> upset and uh, not in a good place right now, but I'm, I'm actually just, I'm, I'm turning the line. I'm turning the curve right now. And, you know, yes, it would be nice to have a lady friend on board the boat with me. I will say that. Um, however, the lady friend that I am looking for to have on the boat with me, and I'm not looking for, you know, TNA and some deck fluff, although that would be nice. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a partner who can help out with the boat, who can scuba dive, who can swim, who can help me film, who shares the same passion and interest that I have um, and, and is willing to go through a little bit of hardship with the idea of living on a sailboat and sailing the world. Because that is what's going to happen. I'm going to take this boat. I'm going to go through the Erie Canal, down the Hudson, down the East Coast, down to Florida. I'm going to either work on this boat or I'm going to work and, and replace this boat with something bigger and better. And then it's going to be the Bahamas, the Caribbean, and you know points east and west from that point on. This is going to be a permanent ongoing trip. Um, going to be a big adventure. And as I reminded somebody today, the difference between an adventure and an ordeal is simply attitude. So finding a, the, a lady in the proper attitude who recognizes it as being an adventure and not an ordeal. I want someone who really thinks it's fun to go out sailing and fishing and, and living on the seas, as opposed to someone who's complaining about the fact that we're, you know, using a bucket instead of a flush head or, you know, some fancy house someplace. I hope that answers your question. Hybrid ID now being used in large yachts, but it's a 500 kilowatt genset powering a zip pod electric drive, big diesel powering a generator. And, and, and I agree, Akula, cool, and if that's the case, what's the point? You're still running a diesel engine. Uh, they say with hybrid, they save a third on fuel. And they very well might. But a third is not 100%. And, and solar is not, and solar and electric is not going to get there until they can figure out a way of it being 100%, not a third. Gotta, it's got to push the envelope a little bit further. They are young, it happens. Well, of course, Austin, we all have to go through a learning curve. Absolutely. Yep. Kim says, take care, everybody. Have a great evening. Rest of the evening. Kim, you take care, darling. Hey, Kim, you know, you guys kind of gave me a hard time about drinking wine the other night. And yet I understand from Kelly, you guys cracked open a, a couple of Australian bottles yourself that evening. So just saying. <laughs> but you have a great night, Kim. Thanks for visiting with us. Waukesha says, is it OK to say I miss Megan, Kim? Certainly it's OK. I miss Megan, too. Absolutely. She's a great person. Mary says, sounds nice. Okay. Austin's adventure, that's hard to find. Yes, it is. And Kim says, LOL. On that note, time for Heineken. Ah. Uh, Kim says, yes, it is. Hey, Joe Peak, what's happening, man? Glad you made it back. We had a little technical glitches earlier, but we've got the live stream going again. And Mary, you know, I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be too down on it. Um, I got pretty burnt by my last wife. Uh, and so, you know, I'm a little jaundice, I guess, at this point. Um, the, the, you know, the, the, the bad thing about it is I know she would absolutely love doing what it is I'm doing now, but for whatever reason, she, you know, screwed it all up. So, um, and right now I'm pretty jazzed about my future. Uh, I'm, I'm working my way through a very tough part of my life. I'm not accustomed to being broke. I've never been broke before. I've, Seriously, guys, just so if those of you guys that don't know me long term, I don't know if Doug's on here, my, my my friend from New York from my childhood. 
Um, I've never been broke before, you know. I grew up in a highly affluent neighborhood in New York. Literally, my neighbors were the Guggenheims and Vanderbilt. I, I had a couple hundred acres here in Ohio as a resort where I had guided cave tours and a horseback riding stable and vacation cabins. And I built all that up myself. Um, yeah, then I went to Montana. I had 5,000 acre house sitting on the banks of the Yellowstone River where we did some phenomenal hunting and fly fishing. Uh, and then I moved up to Alaska and bought 80 acres up in Alaska. We were building and developing and then everything just went to hell. I, I, you know, it just fell apart. So I'm not uh, accustomed to being in a financially stressed situation and I won't be for long. I'm going to get this boat down to Florida. I'm going to be working my tail off between now and then. I'm going to continue working in Florida while I'm out on the boat work going. And when I get down to Florida, I'm really going to turn on the steam down there and work. And I'm going to make a ton of money. Um, you know, in the, in the 12 months that I'm down in Florida, once I get down there in, in November, I'll make four or 500 grand. I have no doubt about it. Uh, I know I will. So, and then I'll be able to do something much better with a boat. So, um, it is what it is. So there you go. Waukesha, Megan who? Oh, now Megan from Sailing Doodles fame, Megan Binkley. That's Kelly and Kim Binkley on here are her parents. Lovely girl. Hey, Carl, if you ever find yourself in the eastern end of Lake Ontario, please contact me and maybe we can connect. I also think there's another follower somewhere at the eastern end of Ontario. There is another follower from the eastern end of Ontario. And... Huh. Now you guys have me thinking about maybe going in Ontario for a little while. You see, that boat that was going to be given away to me, it was on the eastern end of Ontario over by Waterton uh, or near there. And I was going to jump on it and then sail it down to um, uh, the Oswego Canal and then take the Oswego Canal down. But going down the Oswego Canal, you're going upstream. Literally, the Oswego Canal, you have to motor up uh, against the two-knot current. So you go pretty slow going up the Oswego. And then that dumps you down into the Erie Canal around Lake Oneonta. Um, but that might be fun. I don't know. You know, hey, nothing's carved in stone, man. So let's keep talking. Maybe it'd be worthwhile for me to do that. I don't know yet. Mary says, I had a bad with my ex-husband, so I understand, Carl. Hey, Mary, I understand. You know, so PM me. Message me. Let's, you know, talk and exchange ideas. I'm not opposed to that, you know. Let's get to know each other, and who knows what will happen. Do you get Social Security? No, honeybees, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm 58. I'll be 59 on August 11th. That's how old Grandpa is. So I don't qualify for Social Security yet. I know I got a lot of gray in my beard, but I'm not that old. Sorry. Right, money can always be made. That's right, Austin. Money can always be made. No bees won. Oh, do you get Social Security? No. Okay, thanks, Waxha. I appreciate that. Deck fluff. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Well, that's what a lot of these girls are. You know, a lot of these guys are out there sailing with all the TNA out on their boat. It's just deck fluff out there to, to show off. And, you know, and, and I, guys, I have to admit, and I'm going to be a little bit of a party pooper here, but um, there are so many people in the sailing genre making content right now that are pimping out there's no other word for it but they're pimping out their wives and or girlfriends for the purposes of building their channel of course some of the girls are really into it they have no problem with it they enjoy it but if you're going to have a long-term relationship with a lady uh, it's not a good idea to be posting her bikini clad bottom all over your videos for every tom dick and harry to be ogling um Somehow that just doesn't translate very well to having a respect for your partner. But that's just me. So, sure wish I knew how to swim and die. Well, Mary, that that is something that is, you know, you're living on a boat. That's something that's kind of a requirement. And it certainly can be learned. I know my ex-wife didn't know how to swim. And uh, we, we took her down to, uh, she took sail, uh, scuba diving lessons in Montana. 
And then we went down to Florida where she finished her certification there and she became an advanced open water diver and really enjoyed it once she figured it out and learned how. So it's something you can do if you invest the time, effort, and energy. Joe Peak, what happened to the free boat the guy was giving away? Joe, he gave a boat away. He gave it away to, he said he wanted to give it to a younger man. I don't know why. And he ended up giving it to one of his countrymen, as he's put it. Uh, and he was from South Africa. So the boat that was on the east shore of Lake Ontario uh, went to a young guy who was going to, I don't know what he's going to do with it. So that's, that's all we know. I'll be on Lake Michigan this summer. Well, cool, Austin. I won't be. I thought about it. I mean, I gave some consideration maybe to doing like, you know, Erie, Ontario, or not Ontario, but um, what's the other one? Um, anyhow, going from Erie up and around over to Michigan and then working on the circle route. Thought about that. But I really want to do the Erie Canal. So I'm going to go the other direction. Sorry, Austin. Otherwise, we could have hooked up, but not going to work out this time. If I didn't have debt to pay, uh, if sell my possessions and go out on my boat. If I didn't have debt to pay, if sell my possessions. Well, okay. I think Mary wants to marry a sailor. Well, Mary, maybe so. She'd be a smart lady to do so. Great way to see the world. I can be learned. Yes, Trav, it can be learned. Absolutely. And starting over at our age is 100% harder. No, it's not. No, it's not, Steve. I'm going to disagree with you there. Uh, starting over at our age is easier because we have something nobody else does, and that's experience. We have learned stuff, we have experience, and we have patience. I'm not in a big hurry. I don't have to make a million bucks tomorrow. Um, I'm, You know what? I'm perfectly comfortable getting on my boat with only two months' worth of living expenses and sailing down the Erie Canal to New York Harbor and taking my time and not worrying about getting down to Florida till November, I'm perfectly okay with that because I have knowledge and experience. I know my YouTube channel is going to blow up. I know by the time, but mark my words, okay? And you guys can hold me to this because you guys know me and you bust my balls a lot anyway. Hold me to this. By the time I get down to the Florida Keys, I will have 10 to 15,000 subscribers and I will have enough money coming in on my Patreon account to cover my monthly operating expenses. I'm not, this is not a get rich quick. I'm not talking about retiring on the money, uh, but I'm talking about building up a decent audience and having communications, building community like we're doing here, getting to know people, getting to know Joe Pete, getting, you know, and Joe Peek's on here, but Joe and I talk and we chat otherwise, you know, and I know he's welding boats over uh, there down on the river and having fun with it. And I get to know everybody. And that's what this is all about. It's about building community and contacts. And so I'm really looking forward to that. So it's not necessarily harder at our age because we have advantages that the young punks don't have. We have work ethic. We have experience. We have knowledge. We have patience. And those four horsemen are powerful, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think so. So I'm going to disagree with you there, Steve. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, but that's kind of the way I feel. Sailing Wrangler started his trip with, from where your new boat is, but he went to Lake Michigan over the Mississippi and then 10 Tom. Yeah, and that is a way, that's a circle route, and it's a very common route. Superior. Yes, Austin. Thank you. Superior. That was the name I was thinking about. Uh, but I, I want to do the Erie Canal. It's just, uh, you know, it's just something that has interest to me for a couple of reasons. One, it takes me past the Adirondacks, which has an area that's near and dear to my heart. When, when I was a kid growing up, my family used to take our speedboat and we would go up to Saranac Lake in upstate New York and go camping on islands in the Adirondacks. So that area is sort of near and dear to me. And so I kind of like to spend a little time up there and, and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I kind of feel close to my dad when we're up there. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. So I have my own selfish reasons for doing it, but I think there's a lot of great history and stuff up there that I'd like to, to share with you guys. And so I'm going to kind of go that way. So 
It's fun spending a night drinking beer with you, Carl. Well, thank you, Waukesha. I appreciate that. Budweiser here. Cheers, Waukesha and Carl. There you go. Okay, guys, now I need another beer. You talked me into it. Yep, sorry, had to be off camera for a minute. There's my opener. How do you guys like my openers? You see that? All on my little float here. Let me bring my camera up so I can see. You see all that? I've got a bear beer can opener. I've got a Harkin, Harkin wrenches there. I got a shark. I got a dolphin and a green one that doesn't have anything on it. All on my GMC floating key ring. <laughs> That's my beer opener connection. And then over here, I have another one, too. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones, actually. You see that? Oh, let me turn it around. Little palm tree. Made out of aluminum. These are fun. I like them. Anyhow, just me. It is fun spending a night drinking beer with you guys, and so cheers, y'all. Number four this evening. Budweiser here. Cheers. Walks. Okay, Trav. Good deal. Uh, JD says, I'm curious. Have you thought about the what ifs? JD, I can say it. And, and JD, correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong, but just JD Swede. The Swede. Is that correct? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm having a live stream here. I'm live streaming here, and you're in the way. Move this down so you guys can see better. Whoop! Now, come on, dog. What are you doing? I'm being attacked by her. Come on. What are you doing? You want something? You got food. You got water. You had a dog bone earlier. All right, get down. Get down. Here. You want to be in the video? Come up here. Come on. All right, go in your dog crate then. Sorry about that. Sometimes she just needs some attention. So, no, get down. Get down. Come up here. No, Lily, up here. There you go. Sit. Good God. There you go. Now you guys can see Lily behind me. Yes, how are you? No, no, don't, don't attack me. Get down. Get back. Oh, good girl. Ugh. Okay. So, J.D., uh, have I any thoughts about the what-ifs? Yeah, you can what-if yourself to death in this. There's all kinds of what-ifs. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Lily, get down. That's enough. Get down. Uh, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. There's all kinds of things that can break and, and be negative and stuff. Um I'm not going to live my life in fear. I'm going to live my life in in a way that I'm not worrying about stuff all the time. So that's where I'm going with. So, uh, will you shave your head again, Carl? I might, honeybees. I just might. I don't know. Uh, and common sense over the kids. Okay. Pops is a Leo. Yes, I am. I am a Leo. I want to get to the Apostle Islands. The Apostle Islands. I'm not sure where those are. You have to tell me where those are, Austin. Uh, Frank Daniel says, I guess you have to purchase me new dive equipment since you sold all of yours a few months ago. By the way, your channel will blow up. You've got a great speaking voice and you're very interesting to listen to. Well, thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Yes, I did have to sell my equipment uh, and, and I got a great price for it. Um, it was old equipment, though. So in my defense, I'm kind of looking forward to going on to some new equipment if I have the funds to do that. So I'm 52. I may be too old to learn new tricks, Carl. Mary, 52 is not old, darling. 52 is just a fine vintage. You are not too old to learn. Never too old to learn anything if you have the want for it. There you go. See, everyone's agreeing with me. 52, not too old, Mary. It's all motivation. GMC floating key ring, and you're driving a Ford. Well, yeah, yeah. 
If you live life worrying about what itch, then you'll never truly live. That's right, Austin, exactly. Yeah, I don't worry about what ifs. I deal with what's reality, not fearing what may happen. If I spent every day thinking about what may happen, I would just be frozen in my tracks and get nowhere, and I just won't do that. So, uh, no, but I'm not in the best of health. Well, Kelly, or can't Mary, that's something you have to work on. Um, health is always something you have to work on. You have to get yourself in shape. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on getting myself in shape. I'm not in any in great. I'm in great health. I'm just obese, and I got to drop the weight, and I'm working on that. Although, obviously, not this evening drinking all this beer. How will you get yourself in gear up to boat if you sell your truck? Uber would be expensive, maybe. And that is one of the logistics that I've been working out, Joe. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize Lily had messed up my screen so bad. Um, I just now brought it up where I can see my own picture. Um, the logistics has been a huge problem. The guy buying my truck has agreed to let me use the truck. Uh, for the next 10 days or so to get everything moved up and organized onto the boat. I am planning on being on the boat and leaving Sandusky in, in eight, not eight days now uh, on the first. That's my plan. So, uh, And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use my truck to move everything up there. I'm going to use my truck to run around there and get everything on the boat that I need. Um, and then I'm going to drive down here. He's going to come here and pick up the boat, the truck from me. And then my dear friend Rhonda has agreed to give me a ride back to my boat. So, I think. Pretty sure she'll do that. So, yeah. If I buy the fuel, Rhonda will give me a ride up to the, me and Miss Lily a ride up to the boat so that we can then go. So, that's how, kind of how that's going to work out, Joe. Uh, but, yeah, Uber would be expensive. And I'm already going to have everything on the boat beforehand. So, it'll work out. Yes. Okay. I'm going to be 114, so I am too old. Peaceful Don, you're really going to be 114. God bless you, sir. Wow. Yep. I, I, I'm going to say here and say, yeah, 114 is probably too old to start a sailing career. Um, but it all depends on what kind of health you're in. So Kelly says, I'm sorry to hear that, Mary. There, yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that too, Mary. I really am. You know, that's just like Rhonda's situation. Rhonda really wanted to go with me in the worst way, but she has all kinds of health issues. Um, and if you have health issues, you shouldn't be going offshore. Uh, you got to stay someplace where there's facilities available to take care of you. But if your health issue is simply, in my case, obesity, well, then maybe you need to get on a boat and go swimming and get the exercise and the fresh air and the sunshine and help drop the weight. I am a firm believer in let the food be your medicine. The medicine should be your food. Try to stay away from all the chemical crap and big pharma. Uh, you can you can eat your way to good health. You really can. I mean, look at me. I am I am probably 475 pounds. I am obese by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm in perfect health because I eat quality food. Unfortunately, I ate way too much quality food while going through this divorce process. I didn't used to be this happy. I was about 350 or so when the divorce started and I've ballooned way up. So I'm going to balloon way back down. Come November, when I get down to the Florida Keys, I expect to be under 300 or pretty close to it. That's my goal anyway. We'll see how well that works out. The Apostle Islands are on Lake Superior. Okay, cool. Was Maui Lay a big, a big of a fluke as I think? Um, I, let me just say I don't want to talk about that. No, you know what? I'm 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 not going to do this. I'm I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Um, I don't know what the deal was with Mavi Lay, but but the guy was a bit of an idiot. So I'm just going to be honest and say how it was. I got on the board of the boat. He told me that Lily wasn't allowed down below. Lily had to stay up on deck all the time. She wasn't allowed to come down onto the boat. If it was raining, storming, snowing, whatever, uh, she had to be up on deck all the time, and I just wasn't going to have that. He also told me that if Lily fell off the boat, he wouldn't turn the boat around to go get her. I wasn't going to have that either. I immediately recognized that he and I are not the kind of people that have a like mind. 
I was not going to keep myself on a boat and put my dog at risk like that. Being on a boat where if she fell overboard for whatever reason, he was not going to turn the boat around and go get her. He was just going to let her drown out there in the ocean. And no way was I going to deal with that. So palm limit, that's the truth of the matter. And this is, in fact, the very first time I've said that publicly. I have shared that privately with a couple people I've spoken to, but this is the first time I've made that public knowledge. So that's Maui Lay. That's the kind of person this guy is. Um, don't get me wrong. You know, he'll get on these live streams and join some of these people, and he'll throw a bunch of money at them on, on Bob Selling Doodles. Not Selling Doodles. Who was it? Someone's live stream the other day. He got on there and was $1.99, like 40 times he did a $1.99 super chat donation. I don't know what the hell that was about. I think he was drunk or stoned or something. Um, but, yeah, I have nothing nice to say about Maui Lay. And so that's the first, and now that will also be the last time I'm going to address that. So that's just where it is. Okay. Uh, he's a motor yacht captain that lives in Sandusky. Oh, okay, cool. And owns Gordon Marine Repair in Sandusky. Huh. Well, that's good to know in case I need some motor repair. That's good to know, J.D. Huh. But no, I tend not to worry too much about what ifs. I, I tend to move on. Okay, I guess now I'm confused, J.D. Who's a motor, cap, motor yacht captain that lives in Sandusky? I'm not sure who you were talking to about there. Can't wait to see you get on your way. Me too, Trav. I really can't wait to get on my way and start making the kind of content that I want to make. Peaceful Don joke attempt. Okay. So you're not 114 then. Okay, yeah, that was a bad joke. Going to say I'd love to sit down and hear some of your stories from you, Peaceful Don. <laughs> Yep, Flake. Yep, he was. What a jerk he is, Carl. Yep, Mary, he is. Yep, yep. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, one last thing. I'm just going to make one last comment. And, and I thought things were kind of odd. When I arrived at the boat where he was anchored, well, he's tied to the sidewall and he was in the, what do you call it, the, the inland waterway. Um, when I got there and, and he wanted me to start bringing all my stuff out of my truck and loading onto the boat, he just sat on the boat and wouldn't help one bit. He didn't come out and help. He didn't carry anything from the truck to the boat with me. He didn't help out at all. He was very antisocial right from the beginning. So I thought there was something weird. And then when I was on the boat, it was like he wanted me to do all the cooking and cleaning and deck work on the boat. And he wasn't going to help out with any of that. So, um, I, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't going to work. So I, I decided that wasn't a good route. Um, anyhow, enough said, let's just leave that lay. Let's move on. So, uh, Jeff Gordon. Oh, Jeff Gordon. I see. Okay. I showed you a link on to his Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, JD. I wasn't thinking. Yep. You are correct. Thank you. Sorry to bring it up, but the curiosity was killing me. No problem. Palm limit. Yep. And, you know, I guess I needed to clear the air. I guess I needed to, you know, be honest and tell everybody what happened. I think a lot of people wondered about that. And I didn't want to, you know, say anything bad or negative about the guy. But I've had so many people question that and so many people kind of blaming me for what happened. And, you know, are, are very upset with me um, because I bailed on that plan and, uh, and failed to be on a boat and it just, it, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't a good route to go. So here's what it is. All right. Let us tomato and ketchup move on. <laughs> Got a sandwich. Uh, I didn't mean to buzz kill the live stream. No problem, Paul. Let's talk about finer things. So, so anyhow, if I get on the boat, my first spot out of Sandusky is going to be uh, Cleveland and I, I'm really hoping to get there in time to, to visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I just think that would be a lot of fun. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and uh, work our way quickly up along the south coast of Lake Erie to get over to Buffalo, New York. Just north of Buffalo, New York, we'll duck into the Erie Canal. And then we're really going to slow down and have some fun going across the Erie Canal over to Troy, New York, 
at which place we'll put the mast up at that point and be able to sail down the Hudson River uh, and then into Long Island Sound. We're going to go around New York City, up the East River, through Hellgate, into Long Island Sound. And I'm going to spend some time over in Manhattan Bay and Port Washington uh, before we start heading south. We're going to take our time moving south and try to be down to Annapolis in October for the Annapolis Boat Show. And then after the boat show, we'll make our way down to Florida Keys, at which point I'll start focusing on selling real estate for a while. Or not. Or not. To be frank with you guys, if my YouTube channel blows up like I am hoping it's going to blow up, and if my you know AdSense revenue and my Patreon income is built up sufficiently where I could continue to sell without selling real estate, I may in fact decide to do that and just go down to Florida Keys and make a left hook and head over to the Bahamas and continue on. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. So how long were you on the boat with him? Frank, I was on the boat with him for a week. Uh, and that's, let's move on and not talk about that anymore. Okay. Cause it sucks. Yes. Please hit the like button. That's right near me. Uh, I'm in Indiana. Well, there you go, Mary. You should go meet up with Joe. He's in Indiana. Um, uh, Joe Pika is on here. He's in Indiana. You guys should meet. He's a nice guy. Rhonda, hey, darling, how you doing? I'm here now via phone. Had to pick up offspring from a job. Hugs, my dear. Rhonda, I am really bummed that you're not going with me tomorrow. I was really looking forward to spending a day with you in the truck going up to Michigan and back. So, bummer you're not going, but I certainly understand. No problem. Jeff Gordon could also probably hook you up with a used dinghy and other things related to your needs on your list. Boating-wise, he's been in the boating business since he was a younger teenager. Oh, that's cool, J.D. I appreciate that. I no longer have a need for a dinghy. I'm buying that tomorrow. That's why I'm going to Michigan. I'm driving up to Flint, Michigan to pick up an inflatable dinghy and an outboard motor. Um, so that'll be done. Would love to sail to New York, but would need someone to watch the farm. There you go, Trev. I understand that. The East River is pretty rough. Yes, Frank, I am well versed at the East River. I have been through Hellgate a time or two, and so I am well versed at what it takes to get through there. In fact, uh, you know, the little two-banger diesel on the back of my 29-footer, I'm going to have a hell of a time racing up those currents. I'm going to have to try doing it on an incoming tide is the best I can figure. If I can get an incoming tide going up the East River, I should be able to get through it okay. Other than that, you know, you're going to see my little boat spinning in the whirlpools as I'm trying to wake my, make my way up through Hellgate. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's a place on the East River on the east side of Manhattan in New York City where the East River kind of meets the Long Island Sound. And uh, on an outgoing tide, man, that water can get rough in there can really get rough in there. So uh, it'll be fun to try to get up and get through that. So you can always buy a cheap car or truck once you are in Florida. Actually, Steve, there's a, I was on Craigslist and I, I wish I almost had the extra money. There's a really nice uh, pickup truck for sale down there for a thousand bucks right now. Um, I've got a very good friend of mine that's got a, a car repair place down there who used to be my next door neighbor when I lived down there, I was going to have him take a look at it, but there's a really nice Chevy pickup truck, crew cab Chevy pickup truck for sale for a thousand bucks. Now it's owned by a guy who owns a sailboat. And as typical in these sailing communities, you know, when they get there, they're going to just dump their vehicle on someone, you know, to somebody else who needs a vehicle there. Sometimes these vehicles get passed on 10 or 20, 30 times in a year as people just move them from person to person. And I think that's the situation with this. I really would have liked to have bought that pickup for a grand. Um, but yeah, when I get down there, I'm sure I'll find something nice to drive. But if not by then, I just may go ahead and buy a new vehicle. You know, the last time I was in Florida in 2015, I bought my ex-wife a brand spanking new black on black 5.0 liter convertible Ford Mustang GT. Yes, I did. I put $5,000 down on it and financed it. 
And then when she divorced me, I said, well, you've got your car and you've got your car payment. Good luck, darling. They repoed it. Yep. But I could go down there with my income and buy one. That'd be fun. Might be sadistic pleasure driving a black on black Mustang convertible around the Florida Keys. <laughs> Probably not going to do that. So how will you post videos from the boat? Joe Peak asked. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I missed something. I bought a 25 horsepower Mercury outboard with tiller for my sailboat. I got it for 400. Very good. Nice, Austin. Okay, how will I post videos? Um, with my cell phone. I'm going to use my cell phone as a uh, Wi Fi link and I will upload through the cellular system. That's how I'm going to post videos. Unless I can find some anchorage along the way where I can hack some Wi Fi nearby. And then I'll do that as well. I'm really not looking for a boyfriend or husband. I mean, if it happens, it happens. But I'm okay by myself. Well, sure, I understand that, Mary. You seem like a nice lady. Please PM me, message me privately, and let's talk. And who knows? You never know where things might end up. Thank you, Rhonda. There's my PayPal account up there to help support Lily and the Lily 2. Uh, Demore's Fish Den on Perkins Avenue in Sandusky is the hookup for some great local walleye or perch. Nice. So they cook up the, the walleye or perch there. Very nice. I do plan on catching and cooking up my own, however. In fact, I'm going to be making episodes about that. You guys will get to watch. I have to go. Best wishes. Trav, good night, buddy. Appreciate it. Pilot, thanks. Night, Trav. Thanks for being here. Mary, you're welcome. Chip Metalia, see you, Trav. Uh, Chish Canary is healthy, too. Is healthy, too. What's healthy, too? Catching my own fish and cooking them up is healthy, too. Yes, is that what you're referring to? I assume that's what you're referring to, Rhonda. Chester Canary, by the way, guys, for those of you that don't know, his name is Rhonda. Okay, we're going to do shout-out time. If you're on here and you have a YouTube channel, now is the opportunity for you to say, hey, I have a YouTube channel, guys. Come over and subscribe my channel. I know Cheshire Canary has a YouTube channel. So please go over and subscribe to Cheshire Canary's YouTube channel. You can do that by moving your mouse over to the far right side of her name, and you'll see three dots appear. Click on the three dots. It says go to channel. Click on go to channel. You can go there and subscribe and then come back to the live stream. So anybody on here who is a YouTuber, feel free to put your name out there. I love to help everybody else get all the subscribers you can. So please jump in and try that. So Paul Mavid says, invite me to the wedding. Okay, I don't know who's getting married, but okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, I guess we've kind of beat that dead horse. We've had a live stream this evening. Actually, one of the guys that wanted me to do the live stream isn't even here watching it, which is kind of surprising. But he wanted me to do a live stream, so I did it. Of course, our live stream did get interrupted, and that kind of screwed some stuff up. He wasn't earlier. He just didn't come back. So I guess it is what it is. So I have a channel with no content. Does that count? No, sir. It does not count. You got to start putting some content up. Guys, it's not hard. You take your phone and you hit record and you aim it at yourself and you talk and you record a video and then you upload that on YouTube. It's not hard to do. Um, so do it. You know, do it. Set a YouTube link up on your cell phone, record some stuff and put it up. That's how you develop a channel and you build. And you start someplace and you learn. Um, I'm learning YouTube. Frankly, I suck at YouTube. My, my videos suck, but I'm building it up slowly but surely and putting the time and effort and energy into it, and we'll build it up. It'll get there. And I'm going to do better content as time moves on. You live and learn day by day. So suck at YouTube, but get started and start doing some stuff. We all like to see content from you. Uh, let's see, move your mouse over the thumbs up and click on it. Thank you, Chip. You and Mary. Okay. One person doesn't make a party. No, sir, it does not. 
Oh, yes, you can get great fish just a block away from Deepwater Marina, too. Deuce and Dusky Fish Company on Shoreline Drive. Well, it's good to know, J.D. I am not going to have the resources to be eating out. I, I, I you, know, you guys apparently aren't believing me. I kid you not, I am going to be that broke. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go to the grocery store and be stocking up on rice and potatoes and staples that are inexpensive and are going to last me a long time. And my protein for the next 90 days is going to be whatever fish I catch. I'm going to be on an all fish, crayfish, crab diet uh, for, uh, for the next 90 days, trying to get my channel off the ground. I, and I'm I'm dead serious about that. So. Uh, yes, I was wondering about that whole deal myself. Thanks for clearing the air. No problem, Steve. Waksha says, rather presumptuous of you that I have a smartphone. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe you have a dumb phone. My bad. <laughs> yes, guys, everybody, please give us a thumbs up. Please do like and subscribe if you're not already liked and subscribed. Check out my Patreon page if you're interested in getting involved with that stuff longer term. If you want to make donations, hit the Super Chat or jump on PayPal. Uh, there's links in the description as well as in the chat here. If you want to jump on and do that, we certainly appreciate it. But I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the plug here and end this. It's 10 o'clock at night or almost 10 o'clock at night here in Ohio. And tomorrow I have to be up 4 a.m., to drive up to Michigan to go get my dinghy. So I, I'm going to have to get going here pretty soon. Some of the nicest marinas around the southern east coast will bring a newspaper and breakfast sandwich or muffin in the mornings for the long-term and temporary tenants. That's very true. Austin, that's very true. The cars were just inducted to the Hall of Fame, FYI. Oh, good to know. I will keep you in my prayers, Carl. Well, thank you, Mary. I appreciate that, and you too. I'm kidding you no better. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and 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 knock this puppy off right now. Um, I've got to get up real early in the morning and get going. So let's go ahead and end this, guys. I really appreciate everybody being here and participating. Um, I'm not mad at you at all, Rhonda. Not a problem. I understand. Um, anyhow, you guys have a real pleasant evening. Please take good care of one another. That's what life's all about, and we'll have more for you later. Bye, guys.